tuberosity of the fifth, tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal, most common area for foot fractures. Most common area for foot fractures is that tuberosity. Most common site for fracture, foot fracture. Okay, <laughs> what side? Talus. Are you guys looking up there? I said don't look up there. No. Okay, this is talus, anterior to the talus. The navicular. Navicular, anterior to the navicular. <laughs> Superimposed. People. Superimposed cuneiforms, okay, good. All right, and what is this little monkey down here? Sesamoid. Sesamoid bone, right? Because it, it looks like it's a separation of the bone, but those are your ses sesamoid bones. <coughs> By the way, and this is my opinion, I think toes are the most ugliest things. <laughs> <laughs> they're just ugly. And then when you look at them laterally, you just look like they're like this, like claws. <laughs> Not everyone. Huh? Not everyone has those hammer. Uh, yeah, and not everybody dislikes toes. I know, I like toes. There's, there's some people who love toes. <laughs> <laughs> foot fetish? Yeah. Major foot fetish. Yeah, just, yeah. Okay, any questions here, guys? Huh? No. I mean, I've seen some pretty toes, but I, st I still don't like them that much. Look at those toes, they look like, um, they'll talk about french fries. Oh, yeah. Ew, he's ruined French fries. You just ruined curly fries, but good. <laughs> I can't even say I've seen the French fries. You haven't lived. You go to the French fries. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday. Why are they on the French fries? Yeah, see, look, look. They look like French fries. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go back. Let's go back to this foot. What what position do we have here? AP or dorsal plantar. Okay. This is an oblique foot. Oh. It's an oblique foot, guys. Okay. And one of the giveaways for an oblique foot, if it was AP, you wouldn't see the heel. Okay. You wouldn't see the heel because it would be superimposed. Okay. So it's in between a lateral and an AP. So first off, you can you can see, you can see the heel. So this is not an AP. But when you're looking at the rest of the anatomy here, especially the metatarsals, okay, there there is no superimposition like you would see in a lateral. Okay. So this tells me this is not an AP. This tells me this is not a lateral. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If it was AP, you wouldn't see the heel. If it was lateral, you would have superimposition of the toes and the metatarsals, okay? Is that a break or a fracture? Or? On the first one? Right here? Yeah. That's your sesamoid bone. Oh. Yeah, it's, close, it's closely attached to the, the head of the first, first metatarsal, so it's very close. All right. Um, what else can we talk about there? Okay, so the oblique oblique position is the best position for evaluating the sinus tarsi. Remember the sinus tarsi? This is the best position for evaluating the sinus tarsi. It is that tunnel between the talus and the calcaneus. Sinus tarsi is that tunnel between the uh, calcaneus and the tarsal bone. The oblique is the best way to demonstrate that. Okay. Now, again, you guys, are, you guys are detectives, right? Are you guys detectives? Because that's what we do as, as techs, right? Which way is the foot rotated? Immediately. Immediately. How do we know? First and second. Based on what? First and second metatarsals are. Okay. Well, here's your leg, and it's rotated towards your right toe. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys are all correct, but I'm going to make it simple for you guys. Here's the leg, and the leg is rotated towards the great toe. It's turned this way. I'll show you this. 
never mind. <laughs> So before you guys started wearing uniforms, and you know, because I've been lecturing this uh, material for a very long time, before you guys start, uh, started with the uniforms, our students would dress in their regular clothes. So when we began lower extremities, I would instruct the females not to wear skirts. Okay? Why? Yeah, your legs are going to be all over the place. You want to maintain modesty, right? So if, if, that's, if that was my concern with the students coming in when we practice, is that a concern for your patients when they're flopping their leg inward and outward? Okay. Now when you're dealing with the lower extremity, you have to maintain modesty. And making sure that the parts are covered at all times. Do you make them like for ankles and stuff? Do they need to take, they don't need to remove caps or anything? Uh, they may or they may or may not. It depends. If you if you got those what really tight skinny skinny jeans now, where it's pasted onto your skin, you really need to pull those things up. If not, you're gonna have to remove it. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to give you uh, start advising you guys now is that when we're practicing on each other, okay. Take showers. Good. Foot hygiene. Good foot hygiene. Okay. Everybody better be wearing socks. Right. <laughs> don't, don't forget to wash your hands when you're touching each other's feet. Okay? Just, just telling you right now. Great, I'm going to get a pedicure. Well, I mean, look, I mean, pretty, okay, so pretty much we, we all have pretty good hygiene, right? Now think about patients who have damage to their foot and you're entering their foot who don't have good hygiene. Mm -hmm. Like huh? Like transient. Or athletes. One of, one of my uh, when I was working at Anaheim Anaheim Memorial, it's called Anaheim Regional now. When it was Anaheim Memorial, we were the official hospital for. Believe it. Okay, so I'm gonna date myself. We were the official hospital at that time. The Anaheim Rams. They were wow. the LA Anaheim Rams. Okay. You guys know Jackie Slater. Mm -hmm. Okay, met Jackie Slater. We were also the official hospital for the Angels and the official hospital for the, uh, the Ducks. Okay, you guys know Paul Correa? Paul Correa was, uh, he's gonna be inducted into the Hall of Fame, but he was uh, one of the best, best players in hockey history and also played for the Ducks, young kid. He came into our hospital to have foot x-rays done because he got hit with a very high velocity puck. Okay, and they thought they broke his. They thought that they broke his foot. So, anyways, I did his X-ray, and uh, he took his shoes off. And he took his socks off. I was like, "Oh my God, dude! <laughs> what happened here? He had claws. He had claws." And and then not only that, but you know, he just came straight from the hockey game, and I'm thinking, "Oh, I need it's a, a mask. little funky." I'm about to pass out. <laughs> so. So yes, that's the foot. Now think if now think when you guys are having to do the hip. Where's the hip located? It's near the groin. Right? <laughs> By that junk. Here's some wipes. I'm just, I'm, just I'm just referring you guys that Here's you may, may run to some odoriferous <laughs> scents. I know. <laughs> just take a shower, please. <laughs> So are we are we pretty much familiar with anatomy now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here is the, here is uh, here is an AP projection an AP projection of the ankle, but it's a special type of projection because we can see opening here and opening here. So what pro what AP projection is this specifically called? Mortise. The mortise. So this is an AP mortise. Okay. Um, Okay, let's, let's do this. What's A? Fibula. Fibula. Malleolus. Lateral, Which one? Lateral, lateral malleolus. Lateral, lateral malleolus, okay. Or the fibular malleolus. Then F is pointing to the bone. Tibia. 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 Medial malleolus. Tibial malleolus or the medial, medial malleolus, all right? You have this oh, mortise joint. Mortise. Okay, so, okay, I heard. Plafonda. The plafonda refers to the surface of the, the tibia, so the plafonda is right here. That's wrong. Huh? <laughs> what, what happened? Oh. 
Did I say La Fonda? No. You said, I said La Fonda. Did I say La Fonda? You said La Fonda. La Fonda, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is La Fonda. If you put these answers on the quizzes, you can't mark us off. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, so go, let's go over here. Uh, what's A? Fibula. Okay, the fibula. Okay. Remember, and that's why I, I, I say this over and over again because it's it's important in, in crit, uh, uh, critiquing your films. So, in a lateral projection, again, the fibula is going to be more posterior and inferior to that of the tibia. Okay, so it is posterior when superimpositioning and inferior when compared to the tibia. All right. Now, I'm not quite sure what H is pointing to. Huh? Mortis is only on the AP. You're not going to be able to see it on the lateral. Anterior tubercle. Anterior tubercle is what it says? Yep. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> H is anterior tubercle. Okay. What's a tubercle? It's going to have a rough surface, so what are you going to find there? An attachment. Either a tendon or a ligament, right? Okay. All right. Uh, G. Sinus. 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 Sinus tarsi. F. Talus. F. Does everybody agree on that? Talus? Yes. Anterior to the talus? Navicular. Navicular, very good. B? Calcaneus. Calcaneus, anterior to the calcaneus? Cuboid. Cuboid, anterior to the cuboid? Fifth metatarsal. Tuberosity. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, I'm not talking about D right now. Oh. I want to know what's anterior, what's anterior to the cuboid? Fourth and fifth. And fourth and fifth, fifth metatarsals. Okay, now let's talk about D. That's the fifth tuberosity of the fifth. Yeah. Tuberosity of the fifth yeah. metatarsal. Okay. You guys got the hang of this. All right. Um, all right, so technical and position considerations. This is an older set of slides, so there might be some modifications here. Um, just like uh, the upper extremities, most of our SIDs are going to be done at 40 inch. 40 inch. Uh, gonadal shielding, always get in the habit of shielding your, your patient's gonads. Just like the upper extremity, you want to use tight collimation. Tight collimation reduces patient exposure, but what else are we doing to our image? Improving it. Okay, we're improving image quality. Okay, so collimation uh, promotes good contrast, lower densities caused by scatter radiation, that's fog. Okay. And when you collimate, you're also going to increase the detail and resolution of your image. All right, correct part and uh, central ray alignment, part parallel to the image receptor, central ray perpendicular to the part and the IR, and then also proper side markers, anatomical markers. Um, Tiffany, did you find your marker? Yes. You did? Okay. I, I didn't find mine though. Everyone has a left KFC. KFC? KFC. <laughs> Are we all hungry or what? I know, right? <laughs> El Taco, KFC. Um, did the students advise to you guys to um, purchase some additional markers? Mm -hmm. yeah. I would go ahead and do that now if you haven't already. Trust me, by the end of the semester, you guys will lose one or both your markers. So let's look at them now. Uh, where do they suggest you get them? On eBay? eBay's good. eBay's good? And they got some pretty cool ones there because they got crossbones and puppies and butterflies. <laughs> there you go, there you go, Shannon. Okay. Go buy some puppies yeah. and cats. <laughs> um, do you guys know what Mitchell markers are? No. Okay, the markers have an area in where you have, I won't say free floating BBs, but there are BBs embedded in the marker. Mm -hmm. And they, they kind of move around based on the position of your marker. So if you did it flat, okay, if your markers were flat, the BBs will fall right in the center of that of the container of those BBs. If you did an upright position, you will see that the markers will be lower in that circular area that contains the BBs, so you would know if that was upright. It also helps if you're doing decubitus films just based on where those BBs are located. 
They spend a little bit more, but they're really cool to have. Um, they're $37. <laughs> For what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's the one thing. $37? You and Amazon, Kristen. Amazon. <laughs> so, is that $37 for both? Yeah. This is a Mitchell marker. So you guys can pass this around. But there's, there's BBs located in the inside of your marker. And again, based on the location of those BBs, it'll tell you if it was done flat or in an upright position. Just pass that around. And I think if you buy them in bulk, they're cheaper, right? So buy like a set of 50. 50? And sell them to everyone else. Yeah, and then just up the price. Are you going to personalize? Yeah, I think you can buy them in bulk, so they're cheaper. That's what I have to use with those two markers and not a bag, right? There's a, like a set of labeling markers also, you know, for a supine, lateral, all that. Right. Is that worth investing into labor? Uh, probably not. Because computer, you can do that, right? You can label with the... Yeah, because now you can annotate. What's right. more what's more important is that the markers have your initials on there or some kind of identification that says that you're who you're the person who took the x-rays. Okay, but that's the important part of it. Okay, so proper side markers. Technical considerations. Uh, lower extremities are going to be slight, slightly thicker and more dense. Uh, Lower extremities are going to be more slightly thicker and dense than that of the upper extremities. So now our our uh, KVP is going to go up a little higher. Um, short exposure times to minimize what? Motion. Minimize motion. Uh, small focal spot. What's the small focal spot for? Better detail. Okay, better detail. Okay. Cross out detail screen screen film since we're not dealing with film anymore. So cross that out. Adequate mass and uh, application of grids for over 10 centimeters. So um, guideline is that anywhere up until the, the knee, so your tip fib, your ankle, your foot, your toes, you generally won't need uh, a grid. Once you reach your knee, now you're probably gonna have to use a grid. Okay, so knee up, grid. Okay, positioning considerations, remove footwear. Our imaging systems now are very sensitive, and so even, it can also pick up now the, the fabric. So if you're wearing a sock, that can also be shown on the x-ray, and it may interfere with identifying hairline fractures. So remove, the, remove shoes, remove socks, remove any type of body jewelry. Okay, shielding, get in the habit of shielding your patients. Modesty, now the legs are gonna be flopping all over the place and as I will show you guys later with our images and how to acquire those different uh, radiographs or images, you're gonna need to make sure that your patient is covered at all times. Patient instructions, are we gonna have our patient hold their breath? No. Okay, simply we're just gonna tell them to hold still, don't move. Okay, hold well, still, don't move. All right, I'm gonna have you guys just uh, review the altern alternate, okay, the other modalities. <laughs> Alternative. Thank you. Okay, um, we do arthrography to evaluate the joints. Okay. When you guys uh, start your clinical internship, you will see a multitude of arthrograms. And arthrograms are generally done uh, with uh, synovial joint spaces, synovial joint spaces. So we're talking about diarthroidal synovial joints, okay? So these are conducted for the shoulder. What else? Knee. The knee mm -hmm. hip. and the hip are the most common places, okay? But there's also a wrist arthrogram. However, they don't do that as much as they used to because the bones are so small, hard to eval evaluate the joints. So uh, what they will do is it's considered a special type of procedure where the doctor will go in with a spinal needle, okay, in, inside the joint space. They will extract some synovial fluid. They will send that synovial fluid to the lab for analysis to find out if there's any type of disease process. And then they will replace the synovial fluid that they extracted with contrast, okay? We're trying to maintain the same type of volume within the joint space because if you injected contrast 
into the synovial sac, it's going to be very painful. Okay, so we try to maintain the same amount of volume by removing the fluid and replacing it with contrast. Okay, now as technologists, once the contrast is injected, you're going to be taking a, a multitude of x-rays in different positions. Okay, so this is an arthrogram. So the doctors may do it under fluoroscope or you may do it as a technologist on your own. CT is the most common way of evaluating joint spaces now, okay, because x-rays are good for bones, not good for joints. So for evaluating the joint, it may be done either by CT or what's the other modality? MRI. MRI, okay. And did I mention that hospitals play the political game? Okay, even when they know what's wrong with you, they're going to start with the basic examinations first. So you won't go immediately to a CT, you won't have an MRI immediately done. It may be weeks and months until you get that done. But then meanwhile, they're trying to milk you for as much as they, they can by doing the most basic type of procedures first. Okay? So even if they know it's a joint issue, you're not going to have a CT or an MRI for a very long time. All right, bone densitometry is another type of um, modality that they use, and it's simply just that it measures the density of the bone. Um, it's a special x-ray equipment. It does use x-rays to evaluate the calcium, uh, the calcium content of the bone. This is generally done with, with uh, older patients or those who have osteoporosis or some kind of bone pathology. Nuclear medicine is another way to study bone pathology. Um, not a good way to study bones itself, but this is a study of, of uh, metabolism. This is good in detecting uh, cancerous process. Now, did we talk about nuclear medicine before, or do you guys have an idea what, of what nuclear medicine is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. In nuclear medicine, we are injecting our patients with the radioactive pharmaceutical, so now they become the source of x-rays rather than us providing x-ray to, to the image. So unless, you, you know, unless you're not used to, to looking at a nuclear medicine study, it simply looks like just a bunch of dots. Okay? But those dots, when they translate into some, uh, it can translate to where there's a disease process that may be occurring. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But nuclear medicine, again, it's your body who is emitting the radiation. All right, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll begin with uh, positioning, okay? Let's do a 10 minute break. So, yeah. <coughs>